let's talk about how to edit our first images inside On One Photo Raw 2020. So I'm inside of the Browse module, and I've navigated to a folder of photos. So if I want to edit a photo, I can just click on it, and there's a few ways I can head into the Edit module. I can head over to the right side of my screen and just click Edit here, or with this photo selected, I can just hit D on my keyboard. So now we're inside the Edit module here, and let's talk about the interface. So this left side of our screen, this is our tool well. So this is going to house all of the different tools that we can use to modify our photo. A few of the main ones that we're going to be using the majority of the time are our crop tool here, your local tools, the mask tools, and then the view or zoom tool. If you're not sure what a tool does, you can just hover over it, and it has a little animation that shows you what it does, and it also gives you the keyboard shortcut to access that tool. So just like in the Browse module, if you want to hide or show any panels, you can do that with those far left or far right icons. So if I want to pull up my preset panel, I can just head down and click that icon, and now I can view all my presets. You can also access the film strip view mode inside of the edit module by hitting F on your keyboard. And if you want to head back into detail view mode, you can hit E on your keyboard. So now this right side of our screen this has different areas that we can use to modify our photo's look. This top area, we have our navigation tab. So if we want to zoom in, we can click one of these, and we can move this around if we wanted to, to see a different angle. We also have levels, which will show us our histogram. We have info, which is going to show us all of our camera information, such as your lens type, your shutter speed, and things like that. And then we have our history pane, this is going to give us all of the history that we've done to this photograph. I'm going to go into my Levels tab. So now let's move on to Layers. So this is going to show us all of the different layers that are in the scene. We only are working on one layer right now, so let's head down to these different tabs here. In our Develop tab, this is where we're going to be setting the foundational look for our shot. We're going to be modifying things like our exposure, our contrast, and our temperature. Below our tone and color, we can head down, and if we want to modify any sharpening or noise reduction, we can do that in our details pane. And then we have lens correction. And Photo Raw is automatically going to apply lens correction for us, but we can always go in and modify it with this manual setting. And then we have transform, which we can use to modify our crop. In the effects tab, this is where you're going to be adding and modifying different filters on your shot. So if I choose add filter, there's a bunch of different filters I can apply to bring creative style into my image. If I want to search for a filter, I can use this search bar here. And if you're not sure what one of these filters does, you can just hover over it, and it will give you a description and a before and after with that filter applied to a photo. With our Portrait tab, if there's any portraits or faces in the photo, it's automatically going to find them and create masks for us, so that we can go in and we can retouch to smooth the skin. In your Local Adjustments tab, it's automatically going to create a new local adjustment layer for you, so that you can go in and apply adjustments to specific areas on your photo. So now that we have the lay of the land, let's head back into our Develop tab here, and let's modify this image. So to start off editing, I want to crop this photo a bit, to remove some excess area up top and on the bottom. So I'll just hit C on my keyboard to grab my crop tool. And whenever we grab a tool, up in this top tool modifier bar up here, we're going to have different options that we can use to modify that tool. So for my crop tool, I can choose a different crop with these preset crops in here. And let's choose a nice 16 by 9. And I'll grab this crop and I'll just pull it down so that the surfer guy is right on this rule of thirds land right there. And we could probably pull this in just a little bit maybe right there. Perfect. So now I can hit enter to apply the crop. And now that we've cropped the photo, we can head over to our develop tab and we can modify our tone and color to bring out that foundational look of our shot. So we'll head over to develop tab here and inside of our tone and color pane, because we're shooting with a raw image, we can actually go in and we can choose a different camera profile. So if I click open this camera profile menu, I have a few different camera profiles that I can choose, and I can also import custom ones. 
One of my favorites here is this on one landscape. So if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard to view my original photo, you can see how it brightens up the image quite a bit and brings out some of the darker tones. Well now inside of my tone area here, I want to modify some of these sliders so that I can bring some contrast into the photo and also even out the tonalities a bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my J key on my keyboard. Using my J key on my keyboard, this is going to show me all of my clipping warnings, which are my true white and my true black without any detail. So whenever you have red clipping warnings, that's your true white without any detail. So if I zoom into this area here, you can see I have a little bit of true white without any detail in these waves over here, which is telling me that this area is a little overexposed. If it was true black without any detail, it would be a blue overlay. So to remove some of this blown out area, I'm just going to head over to my exposure slider and I'll pull back to tone down these bright areas in the waves. But now that I've toned down those waves, I've darkened the entire photograph. So let's head down to our midtones right here. And the midtones are your middle grays in your image. So if I pull up on my midtone slider here, you can see it's lightening up all of the middle gray tones in this photo. And now we can pull up on our shadow slider a little bit as well. And the shadow slider is going to pull up on the shadow tones in your photo. Right about there. And whenever we're pulling up on our midtones or our shadows, oftentimes we're going to be losing contrast. So if you pull up on your midtones and your shadows and your photo's looking a little flat, you can head up to your contrast slider here, and you can bring in a little bit of contrast so that your photo's not so flat. And now I'm going to head down and just add in a little bit of detail with this structure slider. So now let's head down and we'll just warm this photo up a little bit. There we go. So now if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, we've added in a lot more detail and contrast to this photo just by using a few sliders inside of our tone and color pane. So now let's head into effects, and let's apply some detail with a dynamic contrast filter. So I'll click add filter, and I'll go to dynamic contrast. And anytime we apply a filter, it's automatically going to apply that filter to our entire photograph. We can always go in and we can modify this filter by using all of these different sliders in here. And we can access the preset styles by this more option. And we can save a new style if we've modified these different sliders. I'm just going to use this natural preset. And now let's say I don't want this dynamic contrast filter applied to my entire photograph. I just want it applied in this area where he's riding the wave. Well, I can head into my masking options for this filter by this icon right here. So in our masking options, this is showing us our mask view right here. And you can see it's all white. Well, in masking, white reveals and black conceals. So this is revealing this entire filter onto our photo. If we want to apply it selectively, we can go over and we can click Invert. So now it's not applied anywhere on the shot, it's being concealed everywhere. Well, I'm just going to grab my masking brush by hitting B on my keyboard. You can also grab your masking brush by heading over here to your tool well, clicking in Mask Tools, and your masking brush lives right up here. So I'm going to make sure I'm set to Paint In, and I can also switch my modes by holding down Shift and hitting X on my keyboard. So because I inverted that mask and it's being concealed, I need to paint this in. So I'm going to make sure my feathering is at 100 and my opacity is at 100, and now I'm going to go down and I'll just brush this detail on this wave. So now we can see in our mask view that this area of white is where that filter is being applied and where we brushed it onto. So let's go into this dynamic contrast filter and I'm just going to pull up on the small detail a little bit more. And I'll also pull up on my shadow tones a bit, my vibrance, and I'll add in a little bit of contrast with some true black. So now if I turn this dynamic contrast filter off and on,
it's only being applied in this area in the wave so that it's not so distracting being applied to the entire photo. And let's add one last filter. And I'm going to add one of my favorites, the split toning filter. And split toning works to modify the color of your highlights and your shadow tones. And I tend to use this warm preset style for most of my images. And I'm going to head down to my mode here, and I'm going to change the mode from normal to color. And that's going to take away that faded look. And let's actually head up to our mount slider, and I'm going to give it a little bit more warmth so that it really looks like the sun is kissing these waves right here. And the great thing about On One Photo Raw 2020 is we can always go back and readjust any of the settings. So I'm looking here, and it looks like my photo's still a little bit flat. So I'm going to head back into my Develop tab here, and I'm going to go down to my black slider, and holding down my J key, I'm going to pull back on my black slider until I get a little bit of true black in my photograph. right about there. So now you can see there's a little bit of blue overlay in the surfer right there. So now we can hit the backslash key to see our original photo. And I really like how that turned out by modifying some sliders inside of our develop tab and adjusting some filters. So now let's move on to a portrait shot. So now we're back in the edit module, but this time we're modifying a portrait shot. So for this portrait, I think we could crop out again a little bit of this top and maybe even a little bit of the bottom. So I'm gonna hit C on my keyboard to grab my crop tool and I'll head up to the top tool modifier bar here and in our preset crops, I'm just gonna use a four by five. And I'll just pull this down a little bit so this rule of thirds line lines up with our eyes, just like that. And then we'll hit enter. Perfect. So now we have a little bit of a tighter frame in here and the viewer's attention's right in the middle of where the subject's at. So now over in our develop tab here, rather than going in and modifying all of these different tone and color sliders, to save some time in this video, I'm just gonna click AI Auto. So new to Photo Raw 2020 is this new AI Auto feature. So if I click it, it's automatically going to develop my photo's tone and color for me. So you can see in here, I have these different sliders that it's modified to bring out this nice tone. And I can always go over to the slider, this auto slider right here, and I can pull back on it to remove this AI auto or bring it back in. So if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, it's done a good job of bringing out all of the different tonalities in this shot. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna head down to this exposure slider and I'll pull it up just about a quarter of a stop. Right about there. So now that we've set our foundational tone for the shot, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna smooth out her skin a little bit. And a great way to do that is to use the portrait tab. So if I head up and I click portrait, it's added a new portrait filter and you can see that it's actually detected her face for us and created a mask around it. So if I wanna go in and smooth the skin a little bit, I'm just gonna zoom in. And now let's head over to this portrait filter and I'll click skin. And now we can pull up on this blemishes slider to remove a little bit more of those blemishes on her face. I'll pull up on the smoothing to smooth out the skin. And then I'll grab the shine slider to even out some of the highlights. So now watch as I turn this filter off and on. Does an awesome job of evening out her skin tones and removing some of the blemishes in there. And you can always go in and modify these sliders to your taste. This is just showing how this works. So now if we wanna add some detail and whiteness to her eyes, I can head down and just click this eye option. And we're gonna head over to her eyes and we'll just drop these overlays right in the middle, just like that. And now we can modify the size of them with these little handles. Perfect. And obviously it's a little bit too strong. So I like to head down and I'll pull back on the whitening and the detail. 
And let's see how that looks. Maybe just a little bit more whitening. Perfect. So now if I turn this off and on, it's doing a good job of smoothing out her face, but also applying some nice detail to her eyes. And now we can modify her mouth as well. So we can turn on this mouth option. And now I just drop this down on the corners of her mouth. And same thing, I just modify these handles to fit her face. And now I can head over, and if I pull up on this whitening here, you can see it really adds a ton of whitening to her teeth. I could probably pull it back to about right there. And then if I want to add more color to her lips, I can use this slider here. And I'll probably pull that up about right here. So now if I turn these options off and on, It's really helped smooth out the skin and add some detail where we need it. So now I'll just zoom out. So now let's go in and stylize this portrait by using different filters inside of effects. So I'll head into effects and I'm going to add a filter. And the first filter I want to apply, I want to modify some of these bright green tones. So I'm going to add a color adjustment filter. And the color adjustment is great for modifying specific color tones. So I'm going to head into my color adjustment filter and I'm going to click on this green color. So in my green color options, I can modify things like my hue and saturation and brightness. The first thing I'm gonna modify in this photo is the saturation. So I'm just gonna pull this down to remove some of that bright green color. And then I'm gonna head down to my brightness and I'm gonna to tone that down as well. So now if I turn this off and on, it does a good job of toning that green down so that it's not so distracting to the viewer. So now let's add another filter and I'll add one of my all-time favorites, the sunshine filter. And the sunshine filter is going to emulate if the sun was hitting your photograph. It's going to brighten your highlights and your midtones, and it's going to darken your shadows and your blacks. So if I turn this off and on, I like the idea of this filter on this photo, but it is a little bit too intense. So we're gonna head down to our warmth, and I'm gonna pull back on that a little bit. And I'm also gonna pull it to my opacity, and I'm just gonna pull that down we got 40%. So if I turn this off and on now, we could even pull up the amount just a little bit more so it's a little stronger of an effect. There we go. I think that looks really good. And it also brings back just a little bit of that green color from when we removed it with the color adjustment filter. So if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, I like how this photo is becoming styled, but now let's go in and let's use a local adjustment layer to tone down this area of green in the leaves and create a nice vignette around her face. So I'm gonna to go to my local adjustments tab. I'm gonna make sure this is set to darken and I'm gonna hold down shift and hit K on my keyboard. That's going to grab me my adjustable gradient. So in my adjustable gradient, I'm gonna go up to my shape menu here and I'm gonna make sure that it's set to center. So if I'm set to center and I drop down an adjustment, it's going to protect everything inside this mask and apply the adjustment outside of it. So I tend to grab the solid lines and I'll make this a bit small. Maybe about right there. And then I'll just kind of make it the size of her face. Perfect. So then I grab these perforated edges and I just feather the crap out of it. And now if I turn this off and on, it does a good job of just toning down these leaves a little bit. And I could even pull back in the exposure so that it's a little more strong. Sweet. So now let's hit the backslash key on our keyboard. And I really like what we've done to this portrait. I think the last thing that we could do is we could just crop it. So I'm gonna hit C on my keyboard to grab my crop tool. And I'm gonna head up to my preset menu and I'm gonna choose a four by five. Then I'll just pull this down a little bit to align her eyes with the rule of thirds in here. Then I'll just hit enter. And there we go. We've edited our first few photos inside On One Photo Raw 2020.